In 1966, while Ford and Chevrolet were focused on refining their traditional pushrod V8s, Pontiac quietly broke new ground. They unveiled something no other American automaker had dared to mass produce, a true overhead cam engine. And it didn't appear in some exotic sports car or limited edition racer. It debuted as the standard engine in the Pontiac Tempest. What made it even more remarkable was its use of a fiberglass reinforced timing belt, a concept decades ahead of its time, long before Honda made it a household technology. This is the story of Pontiac's OHC6, a masterpiece of forward-thinking design, overlooked by history, misunderstood by management, yet brilliant in every sense. To understand why this engine came to be, we have to rewind to the late 1950s. Back then, like most Detroit automakers, Pontiac was all in on the V8 revolution. Their old flathead 6 had been retired after 1954, leaving only V8 power across the lineup. For nearly 10 years, buying a Pontiac meant driving something big, powerful, and unmistakably American. But in 1961, the compact car boom changed everything. Consumers wanted smaller, more efficient vehicles, and Pontiac responded with the Tempest. Instead of developing a conventional six-cylinder like Ford's Falcon or Chevy's Corvair, Pontiac took a radical shortcut. They sliced their 389 cubic inch V8 in half, creating a 195 cubic inch inline four. The result was called the Trophy Four. It made decent power, but ran rough, shaking so much that Pontiac had to engineer a flexible drive shaft just to keep the car from rattling apart. Clearly, this was a temporary fix. Pontiac needed a proper six-cylinder engine, something smooth, reliable, and efficient. Enter John DeLorean, the young, ambitious engineer who had just joined Pontiac after his time at Packard. DeLorean was working under Semin or Bunky Kudnin and Pete Estes, two men on a mission to transform Pontiac into a conservative family brand into a youthful, performance-driven powerhouse. Unlike many corporate environments of the era, Pontiac gave DeLorean the freedom to experiment, and he had his eyes on Europe. Across the Atlantic, overhead cam engines were already mainstream. Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, Alfa Romeo, and Ferrari had proven that overhead camshafts meant better breathing, higher revs, and more efficiency. In contrast, Detroit was still stuck on pushrods and cubic inches, chasing displacement instead of refinement. DeLorean and McKellar were particularly inspired by Mercedes-Benz's M186 inline six, that power plant found in the elegant 300 sedans and the legendary 300 SL Gullwing. That engine used a single overhead camshaft and an iron block, striking a perfect balance between sophistication and practicality. But Pontiac wasn't looking to copy Europe, they wanted to outdo it. McKellar and his team set out to design an engine that combined European engineering precision with American production affordability. The advantages of an overhead cam design were obvious. By eliminating push rods, the valve train became lighter and more responsive, allowing the engine to rev higher without the dreaded valve float that plagued pushrod engines. Fewer moving parts also meant fewer potential failure points. No bending push rods, no collapsing lifters, no rattling chains. The camshaft sat directly above the valves, operating them through simple followers. And without all the extra hardware taking up space in the block, the engine could be smaller, lighter, and easier to package, perfect for Pontiac's new line of compact performance cars. The real stroke of genius, however, was how Pontiac chose to drive that camshaft. While most overhead cam engines use noisy chains or expensive gear drives, McKellar's team opted for something revolutionary, a toothed fiberglass reinforced timing belt. This one inch wide belt had cogs molded into it for positive engagement and also powered the distributor, oil pump, and fuel pump via an auxiliary shaft. In an era when American engines were still ruled by metal and noise, Pontiac's quiet, lightweight belt drive was nothing short of futuristic. It would be nearly 20 years before Japanese automakers made such technology common. This setup was not only efficient, but smooth. Gone was the chain chatter or gear whine that plagued many OHC designs. Instead, the Pontiac engine ran quietly with a clean mechanical hum. The belt tension to be easily adjusted using an aluminum housing assembly mounted on the right side of the block, simple and serviceable. While critics later pointed out that belts eventually need replacement, in 1965, this was groundbreaking innovation. McKellar's engineers had built an OHC engine that addressed all the classic issues, noise, cost, and complexity in one elegant solution. 
even the camshaft was advanced for its time. It featured extra-wide lobes to reduce surface wear and operated hydraulic lash adjusters that automatically maintained proper clearance. That meant no valve adjustments, no maintenance headaches, a feature the average car buyer could appreciate. The finished product displaced 230 cubic inches, achieved through a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.25 inches. Below the head gasket, it shared some DNA with Pontiac's earlier 215 cubic inch inline six, but its block was significantly reinforced with a deep skirt Y block design for greater strength and rigidity. In its base single barrel form, the OHC6 produced 165 horsepower, a solid figure for 1966, especially for a smooth revving six cylinder. It could easily spin to 5,000 RPM without the violent vibrations common in pushrod engines. But the real magic came with the optional Sprint package. This upgraded package included a high-performance camshaft, a four-barrel Rochester Quadrajet carburetor, and higher 10.5 to 1 compression. It made an impressive 207 horsepower and 228 pound-feet of torque, numbers that rivaled many small-block V8s of the time. To put that in perspective, Chevy's 283 V8 made just 195 horsepower. Pontiac 6 was lighter, smoother, and nearly as powerful, a remarkable feat. In 1968, the engine grew to 250 cubic inches, bumping power to 175 horsepower in base form and 215 horsepower for the Sprint. And by 1969, the high output Sprint 6 delivered a stunning 230 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, V8 territory. That same year, you could walk into a Pontiac dealership and order a Firebird with a six-cylinder engine that outperformed many muscle car V8s. Pontiac didn't just drop this engine into a car and call it a day. The Sprint package was a carefully balanced performance setup. Buyers got a stiffer suspension, upgraded tires, a limited slip differential, and shorter gearing, all tuned to take full advantage of the high-revving six-cylinder. It wasn't just an economy car anymore. It was a refined, driver-focused machine that could hold its own against bigger, thirstier engines. The Pontiac OHC6 remains one of the most innovative and underappreciated engines in American automotive history, a glimpse of what Detroit could have been if imagination had triumphed over corporate caution. The Sprint models came equipped with a standard three-speed manual transmission, though buyers could opt for a four-speed manual for a more engaging drive. There was also an automatic option, Buick's two-speed Super Turbine 300, but it dulled the car's performance considerably. With the automatic, zero to 60 miles per hour took around 12 seconds, while the four-speed manual, paired with 3.55 gears, brought that down to roughly 10 seconds flat, covering the quarter mile in the high 15-second range. Those numbers might not sound impressive today, but back in the late 1960s, that was quick for a six-cylinder mid-size car. It held its own against entry-level V8 Mustangs and Camaros, and did so with better balance, improved fuel economy, and more sophisticated engineering. The inline six sat farther back in the chassis than a typical V8, giving the Tempest and Le Mans better weight distribution. Road and Track magazine, at the time, praised the engine's smoothness and refinement, though they also noted the car's overall heft. At about 3,400 pounds, the Tempest wasn't exactly lightweight, the Sprint's 228 pound-foot of torque couldn't quite match the grunt of a 326 cubic inch V8, which easily produced over 300 pound-feet. Still, for an overhead Cam 6, the performance was remarkable. Pontiac offered the OHC6 between 1966 and 1969 across three key model lines, the Tempest, the Le Mans, and later the Firebird. The first two were Pontiac's bread-and-butter intermediate cars, competitors to Chevrolet Chevelle and Oldsmobile's Cutlass. Having an advanced overhead Cam 6 as the base engine gave dealers something truly unique to brag about. When the Firebird launched in 1967, the OHC6 found its most fitting home. In sprint trim, the four-barrel engine transformed the Firebird into a sharp, well-balanced performer, a car that could appeal to drivers who appreciated engineering finesse over brute force. It was, in many ways, the thinking man's pony car. Interestingly, the OHC6 never made its way into Pontiac's full-size models, and it wasn't offered in most Canadian Pontiacs either, except for the Firebird Sprint. Canadian cars used Chevrolet's simpler pushrod sixes instead, likely to avoid the cost and complexity of building and supporting a unique low-volume engine in a separate market. The Sprint package itself came with visual and mechanical upgrades, 
unique badging, optional striping, and a sportier overall stance that signaled this was no ordinary six-cylinder Pontiac. But if this engine was so far ahead of its time, why did it vanish after only four years? The answer lies in a mix of mechanical issues, corporate decisions, and customer expectations. Early production engines from 1966 and 1967 suffered from premature camshaft wear, which caused scoring on the lobes, noisy operation, and sometimes serious valve train damage. The hydraulic lash adjusters were also prone to sticking or failing, resulting in ticking sounds and reduced performance. Pontiac engineers traced these issues to three main culprits. The first was inconsistent manufacturing, specifically incorrect oil restrictor hole sizes that affected lubrication to the camshaft and lash adjusters. In some cases, machining debris or blocked oil passages made things worse. The second problem came from rough finishing on the cam followers, which caused excessive wear under load. The third was almost comical. Small metal clips used to hold the lash adjusters during assembly were accidentally left in the finished engines, and when they broke loose during operation, they damaged internal components. These weren't fatal design flaws. They were early production issues that could have been resolved with better quality control and development time. And by 1968, Pontiac had fixed most of them. But by then, the engine's reputation had already taken a hit. Warranty claims piled up, and confidence among both dealers and customers began to wane. Then came the cost problem. The OHC6 was more expensive to build than Chevrolet's simple pushrod 6. Its unique aluminum components, hydraulic adjusters, timing belt assembly, and precision machined parts all added cost in a corporation obsessed with shaving pennies per unit. The accountants saw an easy way to save money, kill the OHC and use Chevrolet's cheaper engine instead. And finally, there was the cultural hurdle. Americans wanted V8s. No matter how innovative or refined the Sprint engine was, it still carried the stigma of being just a six. Even though it delivered strong performance and better economy, and came with lower insurance premiums, most buyers went straight for the affordable, high-torque V8 options. It was a case where marketing and perception outweighed engineering progress. Behind the scenes, though, Ponchkak's engineering team was dreaming even bigger. Malcolm McCaller and his group didn't stop with the six-cylinder. They developed working prototypes of overhead cam V8s based on Pontiac's famous 389 and 421 engines. One was a single overhead cam 389 that used a scaled-up version of the OHC6 bell drive. Another was a true dual overhead cam design, with four camshafts, one intake and one exhaust for each cylinder bank. These engines actually ran, and by all accounts, they were phenomenal. Imagine a 1967 GTO or Firebird with a 389 DOHC V8. It could have rivaled the best from Europe, but upper management at GM wasn't interested. They were already uneasy about Pontiac's growing performance image and feared that more powerful engines would draw unwanted attention during a time when insurance rates and federal emissions rules were tightening. The overhead cam V8 project was quietly shelved. Ironically, if GM had allowed Pontiac to continue developing its overhead cam technology, the company might have been far better prepared for the 1970s energy crisis. With further refinement, fuel injection, and modern controls, the OHC6 could have evolved into a fuel-efficient engine family with the power of a V8, but the economy of a smaller motor. Instead, GM doubled down on its aging pushrod designs, leading to infamous failures like the Oldsmobile diesel. The talent and technology were there, but corporate vision was not. After the 1969 model year, the Pontiac OHC6 was discontinued and replaced with Chevrolet's conventional 250 cubic inch pushrod inline six. Cheaper, simpler, and entirely uninspired. The overhead cam technology that Pontiac had pioneered wouldn't truly become common in American cars until the 1980s. By then, almost every automaker in the world had adopted overhead camshafts, and timing belts had become standard, before eventually giving way to more durable chains once again. Today, OHC6 Pontiacs, especially the Sprint models, are rare treasures. They're fascinating for enthusiasts who understand what Pontiac achieved. Production numbers were low, and many owners later swapped in V8s, unaware of the historical significance of the engines they were discarding. Rebuilding an OHC6 today isn't simple. Timing belts are rare, aluminum cam covers can crack, and the hydraulic lash adjusters require careful setup. But when restored properly, the engine remains a revelation. Smooth, free revving, and full of character. The Pontiac OHC6 stands as one of the great what-ifs in American automotive history, a bold experiment that proved Detroit could innovate with the best of them. 
It showed that American engineers could build engines that rivaled European sophistication, yet corporate hesitation and market conservatism cut its life short. For four brief years, from 1966 to 1969, Pontiac sold cars with America's first mass-produced overhead cam engine, an achievement that deserves far more recognition than it ever received.